This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. Good morning and welcome. My name is Mark Shklov and I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today, my program is titled King Kalakaua's Trip Around the World. But it could just as easily have been titled Lawyer Across the Sea. Because in 1869, before becoming king, King Kalakaua had passed the bar in Hawaii and become a lawyer. I like to think that King Kalakaua took his lawyerly skills with him when he became king. In 1881, King Kalakaua had been king for about eight years. At that time, he decided to travel around the world. I have some questions. Why did he leave his kingdom at this time? What happened on his journey? Who did he meet? My guests today will tell us these answers. My guests are Zita Kupchoi, educator at Iolani Palace the historian and docent educator at Iolani Palace, and Teresa Valencia, the director of curation and education at Iolani Palace. Zita has been affiliated with the palace since 1977. Zita conducts the docent training classes and does research to support a wide variety of palace programs and initiatives. Teresa oversees restoration efforts of the palace, manages its royal collections, as well as develops new exhibits and education programs. And for full disclosure, I'm on the board of directors of the Friends of Iolani Palace. So, welcome, Zita and Teresa. Thank you very much for being my guests today. Mahalo for asking us. Thank uh, you. My pleasure, my pleasure. Why, 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 Zita, tell me <laughs> the answer to this. I mean, it's only a, it's a little more than 100 years. Why did King Kalakaua take this time Kalakaua to... Kalakaua told the community before he left that we all have problems and I'm going abroad to see if I can find some solutions. When he was interviewed in New York City, the New York City newspaper mentions Washington DC paper rather than New York. He was gathering knowledge about people, industries, occupations, and to develop commercial relationships with other nations. And he apparently was very successful because he made a similar report when he got home. All, let me read for you what he said in his speech. All nations have trials and troubles. With wisdom and courage, we must press on, and we have a future with much hope in it. You have heard with what kindness and respect the rulers of foreign nations have treated me. And their kindness has touched me deeply. And so this was an interesting period of time in Hawaii's history. King Kalakaua was uh, maybe a modern, modern leader uh, at that time. And times had changed, and colonial powers had an eye on Hawaii. So he, d he decided to take a, a, approximately 10 months, right, to travel around the world. He was gone for 11. Oh, 11 months, okay. Yeah. And, and what, what happened on his, on his trip? Where did he go and who did he meet? and he, who, who, who did he go with? He, <laughs> <laughs> he took three people with him. Huh? Charles Hastings Judd, who was his chamberlain. He took William N. Armstrong at the behest of the government. William Armstrong was to investigate possible immigrants to Hawaii because the population had been dying out because of introduced diseases. So Armstrong was there as a government official. And we got a f photo. That's a uh, photo of William Armstrong. William yeah. Armstrong. Okay. He also taught. There's Judd. That's Judd. Judd. Yeah. He also taught, took a man named Robert von Ollenhofen, who had showed up in Hawaii on a steamer and got work at the government hotel and befriended Kalakaua because Kalakaua at the time was Chamberlain for Kamehameha V. Robert was knowledgeable about European protocol and he was a linguist. So Kalakaua took him to help out. And he was kind of a, a guy that told him what to do and what to say in certain situations. He, Is that right? Is that... He trained Ilkea first in court protocol Courtesy for Ilkea. here. Mm -hmm. And then he also helped out Kalakaua and his cohorts when they were traveling so they didn't break protocol. But you need to understand Kalakaua decided to travel incognito. 
Because if you're traveling as head of state or monarch, there are certain rules that have to be followed. But when you travel incognito, you can fly under the radar. And that's what he was trying and to do. And that's what he was trying to do. Trying to investigate a little and, bit. Yeah, investigate and check out and not have to do all the formal yeah. calls that yeah. protocol would require. However, Queen Kapi'ulani kind of anticipated that he might have some challenges, so she packed the royal standard before he left. Okay. And and she did. What was that, Teresa? And it's a good thing that she did. <laughs> and there's, we got a photo of the royal standard, and that's, yeah. that is a replica of King Kalakaua's royal standard, yep. right? Okay. And, and so what happened? What happened? Where, well, how did he start his trip? Where did he go? And He had to go to San Francisco first because no steamer traveled from Hawaii to Japan because he was going to start in the Orient and then Mideast Europe and then through the United States. So all travel, and he was going, he was going by steamer. steamer. Okay, not yes. sailboat, but, a, but steamer. a steamer. And all travel, you had, to, you had to go to San Francisco to go to Asia. Correct. Oh, yeah. okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. So what, what happened in, the in San Francisco? The Japanese council in San Francisco let the government in Japan know that Kalaka was on the way. The steamer captain talked Kalaka into flying the Royal Standard as they approached Yokohama, which was his yeah. first port of call. Okay. dead quiet in Yokohama. It was like, where is everybody? And as their bow passed the bow of the first ship in port, saluting guns were fired, the sailors manned the yards, flags were flown, and every single steamer in port, that happened. When they arrived at their docking place, they were welcomed, and a ship, a small ship, small boat, conveyed them to the pier, the Emperor's band began playing Hawaii Pono'i. Armstrong comments in his book that reduced the entire party from Hawaii to tears. <laughs> so they were given a royal welcome. Right, right. And, and so King Kalakaua, Teresa, he, he thought he was traveling incognito <laughs> and got this great welcome yeah. uh, in, 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 in Yokohama Bay. And they, here was the, as I understand, it was the Imperial uh, band yeah. playing Hawaii Ponoi for him. Wow. The Hawaiian National Anthem. Very touching. Yeah. yeah, at yeah. that time, and, and they must they were in tears. Yeah. All of these, and, and Armstrong and Judd were, were friends of his from, from small kid time. From small kid yeah. time. And they they'd were known they each other. They'd worked in various government positions, so they, they connected. And when and and those two guys, were, what what were their jobs on this trip? What 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 did they have to do? Charles Hastings Judd seems to just have been a um, executive assistant, if you will. Friend. Friend. Exa <laughs> yeah, executive assistant and friend. And Armstrong, a similar position, but his primary challenge for the government of the Kingdom of Hawaii was to investigate possibilities of immigrants to Hawaii. I see. Which I see. led in Japan four years later to the Kanyaku Imen, the okay. beginning of the massive immigration from Japan to Hawaii. Okay. All right. So what happened? What happened in Japan? What happened in Japan? He became a personal guest of the emperor. The Meiji Emperor. The Meiji Emperor and was given a palace to live in while he was there and did a lot of visiting, did a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot, uh, visited a lot of different places, checked out a paper mill checked out temples, checked out places. One of the things he did is he met with someone who was involved in the treatment of leprosy in Japan, mm -hmm. investigating. That, that had been a problem that here in problem Hawaii. Here. So I mean, it was a problem that. in yeah. Hawaii, yeah. Yeah. At the time. And this began also the exchange of royal orders. Okay. Kalakaua gave the Emperor of Japan the Knights Grand Cross Order of Kamehameha I, and the emperor, in return, gave Kalaka the order of the chrysanthemum, and gave people in his traveling party the order of the rising sun. Okay, T Teresa, you have brought a few things to show us. Yes. And w tell us what they are, please. Uh, so this well, is. Well, t tell us what the first one is. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to the rest. So this is the royal order of the rising sun. Yeah. And that's the re that's the real thing, right? This is the real deal. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. So this one is that is that the one that was presented at the time? Yes. This is the one that was presented. Yes. 1881. To Judd. Wow. Mm -hmm. To Judd. Oh, okay. Uh, mm. It's a very beautiful, beautiful royal order, and it actually can be seen on display 
in the Iolani Palace basement galleries um, during normal tour hours. Yeah. And, and in those galleries, they have other types of orders and things too that the king got and uh, what he, things he gave to, or is that in there? Yeah, so we have a number of um, Hawaiian royal orders as well as royal orders from other nations that are on display that were either given by the king, to the king, or to some of the officials. Okay. Well. And anything else about these yeah. gifts that that were given to in Japan? Is there anything about? You know, actually, um, please forgive me, but this was awarded in 1884 to Judd oh, okay. um, when he visited Tokyo. Okay. So it was afterwards, I think, because they established that relationship during the world tour okay. in 1881. Okay. And so Judd then uh, received this award on the, you know, as as his position in the royal uh, household, if you will, and uh, that started the relationship with the, the Emperor of Japan. Now, what more happened in Japan? I mean, I, I find this interesting Ar and fascinating. Ar Armstrong says Kalakaua snuck away and took off with the Chamberlain of the Emperor's household, and they're wondering what's going on. Yeah. And it turned out Kalakaua had met with the emperor to propose privately privately marriage between Princess Kailani and one of the emperor's sons. Oh. And according to Armstrong, when he found out about that, the emperor took it in good stride, <laughs> uh, commented that this would really break tradition in Japan, but didn't say no right away. It was after they got home that they received a letter from the emperor declining the proposal. Hmm. And so you always think, what if? Yeah, what if? <laughs> what yeah. if, yeah, things, history could have changed. Might be. Okay, yeah. so that that was their first foreign stop, and uh -huh. wow. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so what, what what happened next? Where, where did they go next, and, they, and what, what were they learning as they went? Teresa, yeah. Yes, no, I'm so sorry. I have to correct myself from what I earlier said about the royal order, because it wasn't actually presented to Judd. Okay. So sorry for the mistake. It was actually presented to Iokea. Oh, 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 And it was okay. Curtis P. Iokea II that actually donated it to Iolani uh, Palace. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, okay, that's fine. Mistake. That that one that you're this talking one here, about. This one here, yes. Yeah, but but Judd right and that. Armstrong each got that same order when they went they, with the king, yes, right? Yeah, oh, but oh, this okay. one in particular. Oh, okay. That 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 example is the one from that Iokea Io, Io got. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. Iokea Io, Io was an official in the government, and for a while he also served Kalakaua and Medio Kalani as chamberlain. Hmm. So okay. in a good good position to be doing okay. stuff for the government. All right, so. Yokohama, after that, after Japan, what, they, where, where, where are we going? What, they, what happens? <laughs> they, they actually were in Tokyo, Kobe, Osaka, Kyoto, and Nagasaki before going on to China. Spent a lot of time in Japan. And then, yeah. I've yeah. often w wondered about why they spent so much time in Japan. What do you think? They thoughts? were having a wonderful time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and beautiful one, time. And one, one trip, one visit led to another visit, led to another invitation. And led to all these people from Japan coming to Correct, Hawaii yeah. that has affected our culture. Yeah, ever since. Ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So okay. Kalakaua was in Hong Kong, and the official from Siam, now known as Thailand, let his government know. Kalakaua and the Kingdom of Hawaii did not have diplomatic relations with Siam at the time. But when he arrived in Bangkok, he was given a welcome like he got in Japan, a royal welcome. And one of the really, what I think is a cool story about Siam is that Tula Longhorn, the king of Siam at the time, is the prince that's depicted in the story, The King and I. Descendants of his have visited Hawaii, 1931 and the 1960s. And most recently, a great-granddaughter rededicated the Thai Pavilion up at the East-West Center, which is a gift from the late king of Thailand. So all these things that started over a hundred years ago are still coming back to visit us yeah. and talk to us. Definitely. And these relationships are kind of strong, aren't they? they I are. mean, it's kind of funny <laughs> to, to think about it, but King Kalakaua developed a relationship with uh, a king of Siam yeah. whose yeah. children's children, I guess, are yeah. still 
coming here, and yeah. they, they, they came to the palace, too, yeah, right? they yeah. did, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. what, what happened after uh, Siam, and where, where are we going? Uh, Through a lot of other countries in the Orient, including India, and as they were heading to Egypt, one of our co-workers' favorite stories has to do with a meal. Okay, now, <laughs> we're going to take a break, and then we're going to talk about that meal in Egypt a little bit more. Okay? okay? Thank you. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Greetings, it's me, Angus McTech, the longtime host and star of Hibachi Talk. Think Tech is important to our community because we bring all kinds of cool ideas and I bring gadgets to the, to the show, so you gotta watch it for sure. But for the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech. We'll run only during the month of November and you can help. Please donate what you can that Think Tech in Hawaii can continue to be public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming like mine, and I'm in charge. I've already made my donation, and it's really hard to get discussed when they make a donation, but I already did. Please send in your tax-deductible contribution by going to this website, thanksforthinktech.cosbox.com. Say that three times fast. Closing, on behalf of the community enriched by ThinkTech, Hawaii's 30 plus weekly shows, thank you, and we're mahalo for watching ThinkTech and your gen generosity. Let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha! Welcome back to Law Across the Sea, and I am here with Vita Cup Choi, Teresa Valencia, and we are talking about King Kalakaua's trip around the world. King Kalakaua, the royal lawyer. He was became a lawyer, and then he became king, and I always like to tell people that. I didn't know that for 40 years until Z Z Zita told me. And I, I learned a little bit about King Kalakaua. So when we left, we were talking about a royal meal yeah. on the way to Egypt. Before I say the royal meal, I want to yeah. backtrack to what you just said about him being a lawyer. Yeah. In India and in several other locations, mm -hmm. he actually connected with chief justices and observed courts in action in other well. nations. So the royal meal. A telegram was sent to people that were going to be hosting his party in Egypt. The telegram said, prepare lunch for the King of the Sandwich Islands. That was the draft. What was received is prepare lunch for the King. Sandwiches. <laughs> so when sandwiches were brought out for the royal party, his hosts in that location got all upset because that was not an appropriate meal for a royal party. So the train that was going to carry him up to Cairo was delayed, while a more appropriate meal was prepared for the king of Hope, this king okay. of Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, I'm, I, I, I like these stories, and I like the fact that King Kalakaua, uh, we, we learn a lot about him from this travel. Yeah. I mean, he went to courts. Yeah. I mean, that tells you he has an interest in law and order and finding out more about it and. He's not just somebody that's having parties all the time. Yeah. He's somebody that's interested in developing expertise and, yeah. and learning. You know? A Vermont newspaper commented that he was very knowledgeable about international law. Mm. And who they got that information from, I'd love to find out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, he was talking to people all over the place. And, and, and Teresa, something happened in Egypt, too. He got a, he got a nice gift in Egypt, and what, what was that? Yeah, so it's actually this figurine that's in front of us here. It's an Ushbadi Egyptian figurine of Ramses II. It's carved in stone, and it's actually incised with uh, features and hieroglyphics on it. So with this came an accompanying document, and it was on Hawaiian coat of arms um, stationery when it was donated to Iolani Palace. And it states that this figurine was actually a gift to Kalakoa from the Khedive of Egypt um, during the 1881 world tour. So a very interesting um, figurine that we have in the collection. Hmm. And that the, the uh, Egyptian uh, government or authorities would think that this is something that would be of interest and now it's preserved here 
in the Ilani Palace, right? Yes. Right. And, and is this also shown in, downstairs? In, no, in the, the... actually, um, this one is usually um, taken care of up in the attic spaces, so okay. it's wonderful to be able to share it. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's not something that we, we keep it uh, secure. Is yes, that, is that exactly. what I'm hearing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Egypt, what, what else? What else has happened on this tour? Uh, Back to Europe. To Great Britain, back through Europe, back to Great Britain, and then to the United States. Okay, Great Britain. I, I always am fascinated by that relationship. What you know? What's going on? What, what? He was a personal. The Prince of Wales was escorting him all over the place, and a, a biography about the Prince of Wales mentions he was doing that in the hopes of convincing Kalakaua to allow Great Britain to annex in Hawaii instead of somebody else. But what I found was really interesting is that the Prince of Wales' wife and Kalakaua led the ball at one party. Now, this is an honor. The highest ranking man and the highest ranking woman start the dance. The, the guest of honor the guest was, of honor, was, the, was the King Kalakaua of, of Hawaii. Kalakaua. Yeah. <laughs> and this caused the Crown Prince of Germany to go in, <laughs> in jealousy. Because he was Queen Victoria's grandson, and how come this king from Hawaii yeah. gets to go in front of him? Yeah. And the Prince of Wales' comment was, "He's either he's a king or he's not a king. Get over it." Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. what I found really, really cool is that Kalakaua did meet with Queen Victoria. One of the first things Victoria discussed with him is the hospitality that her son, the Duke of Edinburgh, was treated to when he visited Hawaii in 1869, the same year Kalakaua became a lawyer. Mm. She also asked about Queen Emma, who had visited and met with Victoria 17 years earlier. And Queen Victoria, yeah, she, she was quite related to the Hawaiian family, or it seems like they respected her quite they, a bit. They did and she them. Yeah. Kapi'ulani yeah. Emilio Kalani called on her when she was educated, Later. yeah, getting educated in England, and what what happened there? What happened with respect to the orders and that type of thing, Teresa? Oh yeah, yeah. so I brought um, a royal order to share here. It's the Royal Order of Saint Michael and Saint George, and so it's a great, it's a British royal order, and it's um, silver faceted. It's a seven rayed star, and there's actually gold ones in between the silver there. Um, and it's St. Michael Trampoline Satan. That's the um, center mm. depiction here. Okay. And uh, it's just a beautiful royal order. And, and Victoria gave this, is that correct, to yeah. King Kalakaua? Mm -hmm. Yes. I see. And what did, what did he do? What did he do back? He, <coughs> like with the Emperor of Japan, he gave to Queen Victoria the Knight's Grand Cross, Kamehameha I, with collar. With collar is like a necklace. I see. And only four with collar were given. Queen Victoria, the President of France, the Tsar of Russia, and the Emperor of Japan. And the exchange of royal orders is a symbol of respect between monarchs and between nations. Okay, and, and Teresa, this one is downstairs? Yes, this one oh. can be seen on display. Okay. And, and we have a royal order of Kamehameha the first, the nice grant, that, that, that royal order with collar in our basement gallery as well. Oh, okay, very nice. And and so we, we see here on this trip, King Kalakaua is feeling out Japan and Siam and Egypt, and now he's in Great Britain Do you, and, and talking about politics, I think. I mean, I, I kind of hear this underneath all of this, yeah. is that there is some, there's a political talk about that. I mean, in Japan, he's talking about Princess Kailani and maybe a marriage, and then they're talking about bringing in Japanese to work in Hawaii, and then uh, in in uh, Great Britain, they're, they they know they're competing perhaps with yeah. the United States for some sort of dominant p position, yeah. and so that's being talked about, right? There, there were rumors all throughout his trip that he was looking for someone to buy the islands, and he had, he and his yeah. party kept having to <laughs> deny it. No, we're not trying to sell Hawaii. Okay, all right, so. What happened next? Uh, he went to Great Britain, and, and then what? Where did he go? One of his side trips was Portugal, immigration from Portugal. Okay. That started three or four years earlier, but onto the United States. While he's in Great Britain, Garfield is assassinated. Mm. 
before Kalakaua arrives in New York City, Garfield dies. So out of respect for the deceased President, Kalakaua did not accept any public invitations. But he did meet with some interesting characters, yeah. including one very interesting guy that I'd like to I'd like to learn about who who was this interesting guy? Thomas Edison. Okay. Kawakawa had an interest in electric lights and decided one of the best places to find out more about it was Edison's Fifth Avenue Laboratory in New York City. And we have a photo right now. Those are the electri electric That's lights at the electric palace. Electric lights right? at the palace, yeah. yeah. And King Kawakawa got him installed before the uh, White House, right? Four, yeah, four years before the White House got their electric lights. And so he met with Thomas Edison. He, he learned a lot about Japan, Great Britain, and Egypt, and he got all these exchanges. Close out, please. What did he learn? What do you think he learned? Both, both of you, give me a, a brief, brief statement. What did King Kalakaua learn from, from his trip around the world? I think he learned that a lot of the nations were having the same challenges that he was experiencing here with immigration and with new technology. And he also learned that there are always ways to um, meet those challenges. Okay, Teresa? I think um, it also highlighted the importance of these diplomatic relationships with other nations and the exchange of ideas and also bringing people to Hawaii as well and the contributions those immigrants made to Hawaii then and to Hawaii now. And it's a continuing story. It his, is. his trip continues in a way, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. It does. Well, thank you both very much. I appreciate having you here today, and especially these beautiful objects. And uh, look forward to our next time. Aloha. Mahalo for inviting us. <laughs>